Hola, yo soy Angelica and I'm allowed to be your Spanish teacher. Welcome to Spanish for Now. In today's video, you're going to learn many things about how to communicate in the topic of family, how to ask and reply information about it. You are going to learn also some verbs conjugation and a, a few tips. So let's start. Okay, for today's lessons, we are going to learn about the definite articles or in Spanish they are called artículos definidos. Remember that in Spanish, we divide everything in gender, female or male, that's it. So uh, for singular, we are going to use la and el, yes? Las for plural and los for plural. Uh, and here I put the, the indefinite articles. We studied about them in the past videos. Uh, in this video, they are, we are not going to use them. I've just put it here for you to remember. But what we are going to use is el o la, las o los. Okay? In this part of the video, we are going to need the vocabulary of family members and we are going to use the definite articles, okay? Uh, I made a video about this vocabulary before. If you don't know it, you can watch it and then you come to this video again. So we are going to start. I'm going to, to remember you this vocabulary and I'm going to explain you the gender, the difference. For example, we have padre and madre, mother and father, no problem. We can say la madre o el padre, yes? like the father and the mother, or in French, la mère et le père. We have, we have mujer, esposa, for wife. Both means the same, you can use whatever you want. Same happens here for male, marido o esposo, okay? I think uh, in Spain, it's more common to use marido and mujer, but here in Latin America, we usually listen to esposa o esposo, yes? And look, this word ends in O, and this is male, but here ends in A, and it's female. So you can start like seeing which difference each gender. Now we have son as hijo, and look, hija is going to change by letter A. Hermano o hermana, tío o tía, uncle and aunt. Brother and sister, sobrino and sobrina, nephew and niece, abuelo and abuela, abuelo, grandfather and grandmother, nieto and nieta, grandson, granddaughter, primo and prima, cousin. In, in English it's the same, but in Spanish we always make the difference. Novio, boyfriend and girlfriend, novia. As you say, most of these words ends in O for male and most of these words end in A. For female, what happened with the gender? This, this is what happened, okay? We, we always make the difference between these two, okay? And now the number, we can use the plural of this. We can say, just with adding an S, we just can put las madres, and we are going to have like the mothers, plural, for all those words, las novias, las nietas, las abuelas, etc. So here is where it changed. We are not going to use el, we are going to use los. This is kind of irregular, but it is simple. You just need to change el by los and add an is. For example, los padres, okay? Okay, let's do like a challenge for your reading comprehension in Spanish. Here we have a family tree in Spanish it is called árbol genealógico here uh, sorry for my drops I'm not really good at it but here we have a family three what are you going to do I'm going to read for you in Spanish all the names of these family members what do you have to do you're going to try to draw this is Kim in your in your notebook in a sheet whatever you want and you're going to try to listen to me in Spanish and try to UVK each family member where it must be okay uh, you, let's do it let's try it says Roberto y Maria tienen un hijo 
Marco, que es el mayor, y dos hijas, Patricia y Ana. Marco y Ana están solteros. En cambio, Patricia está casada con Luis y tienen un hijo y una hija que se llaman Santiago y Mariane. Y ellos son sobrinos de Marco y Ana. Ok, how was it? Was it difficult? Es todo difícil. Vamos a ver cómo les quedó. Uh, here you have the answer. Marco, Patricia, Luis, Ana, Santiago y Mariane. Let's see how. Ma Roberto y María tienen un hijo. So we have three possibilities. This, this and this. Look at this. There is no line. So this, this person is not a son or a daughter from them. So, que es el mayor. Y dos hijas, Patricia y Ana. So, we can indicate here the daughters, but the point is which daughter is going to be in each space. So, we need to continue reading. Marco y Ana están solteros. So, here is like the point, like, like the, the main difference. Marco and Ana are single. But what happened here? This person is engaged or married. So, here we cannot put Ana. Here it must be Patricia. Okay? So we know and we already know the name of the person that she is married. Okay? Uh, Patricia está casada con Luis y tienen un hijo y una hija que se llaman Santiago y Mariane. Y ellos, estos dos son nietos de ellos dos. Okay? So as you can see, it was easy you just need like to practice your comprehension and vocabulary he the, here the vocabulary is really important okay now based on this activity i'm going to do a, another activity but this is for listening okay i'm going to read in spanish a description from one of these family members we don't know who of them is but you are going to write me in the vocabulary who this person is Okay, so pay attention and listen carefully. A ver si adivinas quién soy. Es muy fácil. Mi padre se llama Roberto y mi madre se llama María. Tengo un hermano Marco y una hermana. También tengo un sobrino muy gracioso y una sobrina preciosa. Y mi hermana está casada con Luis y se llama Patricia. ¿Sabes quién soy? Okay, now here I have like a grammar part for you with verbs because they are really important to talk about our families and all of that stuff. So here we have singular and plural. This, this is like a challenge of between the verbs. Tener, ser y estudiar. Can you do the plural form of this conjugation? For example, I said tengo for the first person, like for the first person, like I have. So now I'm I'm going to say we have, like tenemos. Here I have the answer for you. Let's see if you're right. Vamos a ver si acertaron. Tengo, tenemos. Tienes, tienen. Tiene, tienen. Es, son. Está, están. Estudia, estudian. What is like a key for doing this? Well, what you need to do is identify the pronoun that we are talking about, yes? For example, first for example, in tengo, we know that is the first person. So we need to change the first person by its plural. That is going to be we. So that's why here we put tenemos. In this, in this case, in tienes, is tú. The pronoun is you. So, and the plural of this is ustedes. So. And the conjugation of the verb tener for ustedes is tienen. Okay, then we have tienen, like él, ella tiene. Aquí, él, ellos, ellas tienen. Él es, ellos son. Él está, ellos están. Él estudia, ellos estudian. You see, with the pronouns, it's super, super easier to identify the correct conjugation for each one. So now let's put in practice all of them. Now, uh, doing uh, this video like more communicative, we, I'm going to give you some questions that they are very useful. When you want to talk or ask about family to someone, 
you can use these questions, you can change them and play with them because in Spanish there are many ways to do the same question. So you can, let's see some examples. Here, uh, para preguntar sobre el estado civil, solamente preguntan, solo hay como una pregunta. ¿Estás casado o casada? You, you are going to use O when you are talking to a boy and you are going to use A when you are talking to a girl, ¿ok? And, ¿Y por qué yo coloco estás o estás? Why I put estás o estás? Because this is going to be like the difference between formal and informal. If you want to sound like more formal, you have to use está without the S. Think about that the S uh, for a verb in Spanish in a question is when you are asking to someone that you are like, like a friend of you, like you are in, in confidence that you can talk like, like in an informal way, you can use estás. But first of all, if you are talking to your boss or to your teacher or someone to, to you that you must be like respect, you must use esta, okay? And you can use like polite words, for example, Disculpe, usted está casado? And another point, we, in Spanish, we don't use the pronouns to my question. As you can see, in all these questions, there isn't any pronoun because don't, we don't use it. And why? Uh, that's because in each conjugation, the verb, we have a different conjugation for each pronoun. So we automatically know who are we talking about, who you are making the question to, because of the pronoun. Yes, I know. We already know. If you if you ask to someone, estás casado, they know that they are that you are asking to him or to her. But for example, if you change this by están, um, that's going to be a conjugation for ellos o ellas. Maybe this person is, is going to ask who, who, who are married? ¿Quiénes están casados? Okay, so you can ask that. Uh, you can ask to, like, ¿estás soltero o soltera? Like, single? And familia. To ask about family, there are many questions that we can do in Spanish. For example, uh, do you have brothers? The same question, but in Spanish, is shorter. ¿Tienes hermanos? Uh, the word siblings in Spanish is hermanos. Like the plural of brothers is the same like siblings. So you can say hermanos o hermanas. Tienes sobrinos, tienes primos, tienes abuelos, tienes novia, tienes novio, whatever. And here happens the same. We tiene or tienes. Now, ¿qué hay de tus padres? Oh, you can change. Padres por hermanos, que de tus padres, tus hermanos, tus sobrinos, tus tíos, tus abuelos, tu novio, tu novia, whatever you want. And look at this, the possessive, tus. Why you use tus? Because here there is a word that is a plural, and it is a plural. So you need to make the, the uh, how to say it, tienes que hacer la congruencia entre el número. You need to put, this is very important in Spanish, if you put a word in plural, you have to put the other words in plural too. This is the gender, okay? And here, you can say when you want to ask, ¿Puedes o podrías hablar de tus padres, hermanos? If you use puedes, it's like, can you? And podrías is like, could you speak about your parents, your brothers, your sisters, whatever you want. So, podrías is more uh, formal and puedes is more informal, but it is normal. And finally, to, to, to ask about the age of someone. ¿Cuántos años? Uh, it's, it's going to be like, how old tiene tu hermana? Uh, a good difference between Spanish and English is that in English, we, we use the verb to be to express our age. And if you notice that in people from Latin America, and we usually have this mistake because you, we use like I have 20 years old but that's grown and this is because of this because in Spanish we use this verb to express our age in Spanish I said yo tengo 21 años but in English I have to say I am 21 years old so this is this is the difference that's why many many of us okay I, I'm not a I'm not one of them <laughs> but many of us uh, said it Okay, so please correct us. 
So, ¿Cuántos años tiene tu hermano? ¿Cuántos años tienes tú? ¿Cuántos años tiene tu novio, tu novia? You can change the, the person who, that you are asking for, and that's it. So let's bring practice all these questions. Muy buenas tardes, estamos aquí con el señor Ramón. Le vamos a hacer unas preguntas. Disculpe, ¿estás casado? Sí. ¿A qué te dedicas? Soy ingeniero. ¿Y tu mujer? Ella es una zafata. ¿Tienen hijos? Sí, tenemos una hija. ¿Cuántos años tiene? Tiene tres años. ¿Tienes hermanos? Un hermano y una hermana. ¿Y a qué se dedican? Estudian periodismo los dos. ¿Y tus padres? Mi padre es abogado y mi madre enfermera. Muchas gracias. Well, this is all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and you practice different skills with it. And I wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and thank you for watching my videos. Don't forget to subscribe to Spanish for All. And, and again, I'm sorry that I don't upload videos frequently, but I've been really, really busy. I'm going to try to do my best. And Happy New Year, Feliz Año y Prospero Año Nuevo.